it's lucky that I cooperated with the police uh, because otherwise I might have ended up in the morgue. <laughs>
happen often, Star? That uh, do, do do you get hostile reactions from people on the street? Uh, for yeah, for most of the time, every time I'd go out, I'd meet some person who had something to say, who you know, formed strong opinions, and uh, decided to take their opportunity to take them out on me. I never expected that the case would last for an entire year. I didn't expect the postponements and delays and the jockeying with, you know, we can't dismiss this now because the media is paying too much attention. That just mm -hmm. seemed totally, totally backwards, right? That should not be the focus of the, the justice system. So after the, the months, the many months, Massachusetts finally dropped the hoax device charge. Um, and um, claimed that I had been a disorderly person instead, you, because you don't have to intend to be a disorderly person. So it's something you can pretty much charge anybody with. So the deal made with the DA was for community service, 50 hours of community service, to not get arrested in Massachusetts for an entire year, and that I had to issue a public apology to uh, Boston. And it's, it's a totally fascinating thing, right? Because if you watch the press report by the police on that day, Major Scott Perre says, um, it's lucky that I cooperated with the police uh, because otherwise I might have ended up in the morgue. Thankfully, because she followed instructions as required, she ended up in our cell and as opposed to the morgue. Had she not followed the instructions, deadly force may have been used. Well, and Star, I'll, I'll paraphrase some of the comments, some of those 250-odd comments on that original post. Many people asked, you know, come on, what were you thinking? Who would wear a device like that into the airport? I know what it was, but I'm not dumb. And some of the people right. working in that airport, you know, they're, they're, I'm sure you've heard that a million, million times. What do you say to those people? Um, what was I thinking? I was thinking it was a cold day. It was a sweatshirt. Um, I, if, I'd, if I'd seen my work through their eyes, no, it wouldn't have made any sense to wear it, but I didn't see it that way. I was in a baggage claim. I didn't pass any security checkpoints. Uh, one of my friends pointed out that if you're exercising your right to bear arms, you can have 11 pounds of ammunition on you at that point. I didn't meet any TSA people that day. You're um, a year older and wiser. What would you say to someone else, um, maybe a, a younger person, uh, a young man or woman who is just um, becoming fascinated by wearable computing and, and thinking of tinkering around with this. My perception is that a lot of the country was built on people who could make things. It's important. You can't just buy everything. Star, our segment producer Derek Bledsoe asks, um, you haven't spoken about this ordeal before now. Why with us? Why with Boing Boing TV? It's been about a year, and I realize that it's important to say my end of things because it does, that perspective doesn't exist. And I chose Boing Boing because of all of the different news headlines I read, uh, Boing Boing was the least speculative and appeared to get most everything right um, and in terms of your guesses as to why I made it, my not not intending to cause any havoc. Star Simpson, thank you very much for joining us on Boing Boing TV. Thank you, Jenny.